At 49 millimeters and 61.3 grams, the Apple Watch Ultra is Apple's largest and most rugged watch to date. It has dual frequency GPS, a peak brightness of 2000 nits, a 36 hour battery life, a bright orange action button, a titanium case, water resistance down to 100 meters, and of course, an ultra price tag of $799. Apple claims that every detail has been engineered to create the most rugged and capable Apple Watch ever. So in the last three months, we got lost. Yeah, we're the fools with uh, 20 pounds of gear on our back. We dove deep. We went on long runs and we even tore it apart. Average use should probably get you about two years. To see just how ultra this watch really is. So in this video, I've created these mini reviews or vignettes that highlight some of the most important features on the Apple Watch Ultra. I've called in some pros too, and I encourage you to jump around. All of the sections are labeled down below. The Apple Watch Ultra is an amazing device, but much like a Jeep or a fancy pair of hiking boots, it sells this grand idea of off the grid adventures that it isn't always capable of delivering on. Enjoy, bud. putting a lot of trust in technology today. But lucky for one of us, I've started my track back, so. New to the Apple Watch SE, the Apple Watch Series 8, and of course the Ultra is a track back feature within the Compass app. If you start a walk, a bike, or a hike, it will automatically start dropping waypoints as you're going so that you could track back. But Apple claims that it will also start automatically when you are quote unquote off the grid. In the fine print on their website, it says that that means that you are away from locations that you are normally in and you're away from Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna start a hike, which should automatically start the track back feature, but Viren is not gonna start a hike and we're gonna see if it actually starts tracking back for him because, well, I think that you're gonna need track back when you don't think you'll need it the most, if that makes sense. Anyway, let's go get lost. V, you ready no, for this? No. Not really, we have a lot of gear. Why, do, why are we doing this? Apple in its September keynote seemed set on convincing all of us that danger is everywhere and only an Apple device running Apple software can save us. On the Apple Watch Ultra, that means safety features such as fall detection, emergency SOS that can alert specific contacts if you need help, car crash detection, and backtrack. This is my supervising producer, Viren. I'm so glad I brought my hiking shoes. I made him set out on a six mile hike with me. We were both wearing Apple Watch Ultras, and, well, quickly, our tech began to fail us. That way? Or that way? I think that way. I said that way. First, it was the lack of turn-by-turn -turn directions, or way to follow a preset route. So, less than a mile into our hike, we took our first wrong turn. Embarrassing. Even though I did have an offline map, I was attempting to follow on my phone. I think we keep veering in. You think we keep veering? Veering like, oh. oh. This mistake ended up adding an extra three miles to our hike. There were also multiple times we had to make an educated guess about which trail to follow, since our trails were not well marked. <laughs> Long story short, we probably fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no. A watch meant for adventures should have integrated offline trail navigation. Hey, how you doing, kid? I'm doing great. I'm doing so good up here. <laughs> Second, holding my camera led to my wrist pushing down on a combination of physical buttons, which paused our walk for 0.6 miles before I realized it was paused. The watch still recorded points in the Compass app for the backtrack feature, even though the workout was paused, but no one wants any amount of miles missing from the final count of a workout. Dumb, dumb, I hate that. And third, and most importantly, Viren's backtrack, it never started. There's absolutely nothing on here, which is, a little concerning. Despite being incredibly off the grid and having started a walk after the watch noticed Viren was walking for a while, the compass never began dropping any waypoints. Yeah, at this point you really should see a lot of little breadcrumbs. So if he had gotten lost, he wouldn't be able to use the backtrack feature. I guess you have to just like assume that you will get lost. Dude, that sucks. That kind of sucks. Um, since I physically started my hike workout on the watch when we started, I had many, many waypoints to follow on our way back. Hella points. V, thank God you got me. What would you do without, what would you do without me? So at the top of the mountain, which was the middle of our hike, I simply pressed the backtrack button on the Compass app, and it led me to every point I had dropped. 
This is going to be incredibly useful when bushwhacking or hiking without a trail to the top of a peak. But in our experience with two days of hiking, unless you physically start a workout, this feature does not always start on its own. And I don't think it should be relied upon when heading out on an adventure. Don't assume this feature is just going to start. Downloading an offline hiking map, such as one from All Trails, is still a safer bet. Another safety feature on the Apple Watch Ultra is its siren. Apple claims that they worked very hard to make this 86 decibel siren unique so that when you hear it, you know that it's not just another sound in nature. But to test it, I'm gonna start walking away from Viren and every 30 seconds, he's gonna sound the siren. If I can hear him, I'll stop. I can hear that! And I'll note that I can hear him and then I'll keep walking till I can no longer hear him. But I've also bought a $4 whistle. So after we test the siren, we're gonna test just a normal whistle and see how far away I can get from that piece. Wait, give me that camera. In order to turn on the siren, all you have to do is just hold on to the action button, and then you'll get prompted to slide across the screen to turn on the siren. All right, I'm 125 feet away, and I hear that. Oh yeah, I hear you. All right, so you're gonna hear that. Continuing down the path. 250 feet. Yeah, I can hear that. All right, this is 450 feet. Oh yeah, okay, 450 feet. We're gonna go to 550 feet. Oh yeah, okay, 0.1 miles, 550 feet. I can still hear him, but barely, barely. Either he's not ringing it or I can't hear it. So 0.12 miles. That's, uh, that's about where I stopped hearing it. Now I gotta walk back. It's like the walk of shame. <laughs> whistle time. $4 whistle. You remember, you're like, you full might power. die. Yeah, yeah, like this is your full safety. Power. Full power? Yeah. Oh yeah, let me back up a little bit. Oh <laughs> is, okay. that gonna, is that gonna help? <laughs> Holy sh On the road again. I'm gonna go right to 550 feet, and then I'm gonna go all the way to point one, two miles, assuming I could hear him at 500 feet. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's like, <laughs> not even a question. At point one miles, you could definitely hear the whistle. Yep, I just heard it at point one, four miles. Okay, this is point one, five miles. Yep, I just heard it. I feel terrible blowing this whistle. Yeah, oh my god, <laughs> 0.2 miles. It's so really hoping I wouldn't have to keep walking. I'm officially at a quarter of a mile, and we're gonna see if we can hear him here. I have to keep doing this, right? I do. Hello. Hi. You might hear a whistle, feel free to ignore it. Okay. Okay, I just heard it, but it was very faint. Dude. Yeah. Quarter of a mile. Yeah. <laughs> You're not yeah. even surprised. Makes sense, honestly. Four dollars. I felt terrible blowing this whistle. I warned everybody walking by. Yeah, same. So while these safety features can be very useful, they should not be depended on. Okay, I need to rant about the action button for a bit, so hear me out. By default, when you press the action button, it is set to open a list of workouts for you to choose from. And I think that's wrong. You can set up complications to do that. I set mine so it starts my most used workout, which is something that I do every day, like walking. And from a practical point of view, when it comes to the button, it is super convenient and I trust it. Whenever I leave the house, I just press it. I don't even double check to make sure that the workout has started. And it's easy to pause exercises even when your screen is locked. Except, well, that really means the button is only good at one thing, which is starting my walking workout, and that is it. So, if you're someone who uses focus modes on your phone, like me, wouldn't it be cool if the action button just sorta remaps itself? So, for example, let's say you're on a mountain. If I'm on a mountain and I have my skiing watch face turned on, you would expect that the action button would just assume that the next activity that I want to do is skiing, and it would adapt itself to skiing or turning on the slopes app. Same thing with any other focus mode that is based on a specific activity that I do. 
Luckily, internet is a great place and somebody already made a series shortcut just for that. Except it's a series shortcut, so it doesn't work as good as it should. The screen itself is big and bright. It can reach up to 2,000 peak of maximum brightness and I had no problem looking at my info during the day. The weight and size of the Ultra also didn't bother me while skiing or everyday use, but yeah, it can look absolutely massive on a smaller wrist. So I do have one other gripe that I want to talk about, and that is screen size. So on paper, the screen is four millimeters bigger than the standard Apple Watch, like the 45 millimeter Series S. But in practice, this newly gained real estate isn't really being well used. I was expecting either just more information displayed or even more new watch faces. Right now, everything just looks pretty much the same, just bigger. Maybe even the lack of curve doesn't help here. I don't know. Anyways, who's next? Time for a transition? Okay, so transition. I'll cut to the chase. The Apple Watch Ultra is a good running watch. It's not the best, but there's a lot to like. Now I've used other Apple Watches for years, and those were good too. I trained for the New York Half Marathon with the Series 7 and like three other watches and didn't have a lot of complaints. But the Ultra wasn't designed with shorter distances like a half in mind. It's meant to be the Apple Watch for triathletes, marathoners, and ultra marathoners. Back when we thought this thing was going to be called the Pro, I wrote that Apple had to get four things right for this to be a true multi-sport watch. That's a better battery, increased durability, more physical buttons, and recovery metrics. The Ultra gets three of four. The big one is battery. The Ultra's battery life is the best of any Apple Watch. It's got an estimated 36 hours of regular use. I've been wearing this for two months and I regularly get 48 to 55 hours, and that's without enabling any low power modes. If you flip those on, I wouldn't be shocked if you stretched that to 72 hours. But it's not gonna beat a Coros or Garmin. The Coros Apex 2 Pro lasts a month and you can get 26 hours of multi-band GPS out of it. The Ultra could easily last a whole marathon, but it depends on how fast you run for ultra marathons. That said, I would stick to six to 12 hour races because this thing's not gonna make it a full 24. Viren talked about the action button, but from a runner's perspective, it's really helpful. I dig that I can launch straight into my go-to run, skip intervals if I'm not feeling it, and pause more easily if I feel like taking a picture. I'm a fan. As for running data, Apple's added a bunch to watchOS 9 that were previously missing, like cadence, stride length, ground contact time, elevation charts, and heart rate zones. Oh, and you can create custom interval and tempo runs now. These are staples on other running watches that were missing from the Apple Watch. The Ultra fixes that, though the metrics themselves are simpler than a Garmin or a Polar, especially since there's no recovery metrics or training load data. Recovery is so important to athletes and is a huge trend in fitness tech. No one wants to close rings when they're injured. That's a miss. Another miss for trail runners is that you have no maps and no turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Runners really care about GPS accuracy, and on that front, the Ultra gets an A+. That's partly due to the fact that it has multi-band GPS, which is relatively new-ish to smartwatches. The gist is, is that it can communicate with multiple satellite frequencies, and that in turn means you get more accurate GPS data in challenging environments like cities or dense forests. I live in New York City, a GPS nightmare, and the Ultra performed just as well as the Garmin Epix 2. The Apex 2 Pro also has multi-band GPS and the Ultra beat it in testing. It still struggles in some areas, but it's way more accurate than the standard GPS on an Apple Watch Series 8. Take a look at these screenshots. I ran up and down the exact same path and the Ultra is clearly more accurate. As for durability, I mean, look at this thing. It is a titanium beefcake. Dropped it, I've knocked it against walls. We might have cracked a Pixel watch in the first week, but we have multiple Ultras and they're all doing fine. But that doesn't mean accidents can't happen. The Apple Watch Ultra has four pentalobe screws on the back. A pentalobe screw is Apple's uh, proprietary screw that they've invented. It's essentially a Torx screw. A Torx has uh, six teeth, 
and a pentalope has five teeth, so you can't fit a Torx inside a pentalope screw. Sneaky, sneaky Apple engineers. But sneakier us will break into anything that they make. I'm Sharon Mukhtari, and I'm a teardown tech at iFixit, and this is Sharpie, our chief morale officer. iFixit advocates for a right to repair. We believe that the devices that you buy, they belong to you and you should be able to do with them as you please, which includes being able to repair them or giving them to a person of your choosing to repair. So what's interesting about the Apple Watch Ultra is that um, you have those four pentalobe screws on the back. Unfortunately, opening the back only results in you destroying the waterproofing of this device. There's a gasket under there. You should not open the back of this device up. The most common repair is likely to be the screen. And if you don't have Apple Care, that's going to set you back by about $500. That's about two thirds of the value of the entire device, which means in all likelihood, if something like this happens, people are either gonna throw the device away or buy a new device and throw this device away anyway. But the next most common repair is going to be the battery. A lithium ion battery will on average last about two years. You might get a bit more mileage depending on how you use your device, but you will need to replace that battery. And it's wasteful to throw away an entire device just because the battery's hard to get to or maybe even impossible to get to. And to risk your screen in order to remove that battery, well, that's kind of a big ask. Apple will replace the batteries for free if you have Apple Care Plus, but otherwise it will set you back $99. We sell these batteries for $25 to $35. You can see where Apple is making their profit. You can see why they want to lock down their devices. You can see why they want to force you to go to them for the repairs. It's got nothing to do with your ability to repair and it has everything to do with them wanting to make profit. This device is a marvel of engineering. It is cutting edge technology. It's a gorgeous device. A lot of people spent a lot of time and effort and poured their hearts and soul into this thing. We would just love it if it was more repairable as well. My name's Devin. Uh, we are out here in beautiful Monterey Bay. We're at a Outer Chase Reef. Often in Monterey, the visibility isn't great, uh, so it gets pretty dark when you get down pretty deep, but we'll try and push it since we can. I started diving in 2014. It's just a way to fully immerse in nature in ways that you can't on land. We are going to go on a boat to do a dive. There's a deep canyon out there. We're gonna try and get some good depth to test out the Apple Watch Ultra and the Oceanic Plus app. Let's see what its capabilities are, see how it compares to another dive computer that I use that is also a smartwatch and just kind of test out the differences. Oceanic Plus is an app for your iPhone. Uh, it allows you to set your pre-dive parameters. It is your digital logbook and it allows you to make certain adjustments on the dive computer itself as well. I also set it so it should activate at depth. So I was gonna do a test with both it not, not uh, hitting the action button and just descending and see what happens. Interesting. Did not activate. Okay. Basic functions that any deaf computer is going to need to be able to do is either air function, nitrox, usually some kind of free diver snorkel. You are going to need to be able to set the different air blends for nitrox. It's going to need to tell you your current depth, your maximum depth, your total downtime. It's going to need to have some kind of ascent alarm to make sure that you're not ascending too fast. It's going to need to be able to tell you your no deco time. And that's kind of like the most basic information that it's gonna need to tell you. Yes, it did tell me all of that, which is great. The way that it's displayed is pretty intuitive, which is nice. It, it does have some limitations. My, my main gripe is that when you are on the compass little section down here, you don't know how long you've been down. You should always be able to see what your depth is, how long you've been down, what your no deco time is. One of the things that is a little bit difficult 
is toggling through some of the screens and trying to get back to them, especially if you're wearing gloves. So not having just a back button that can take me to the previous screen as opposed to sending me back to the whole original screen. The battery life is is a pretty significant thing. I started the dive out with 92% battery, is a 50 minute dive, and ended with 69%. With that, I could get three long dives and maybe four short dives, but then it would be completely done, probably. So there's different colored alarms. There's yellow and red. Yellow alarms were for when I hit my targeted depth and targeted time, and those were all very clear. The one thing that was a little annoying was that it kept buzzing, it kept going off until I actually hit a button to acknowledge that I was in it. The red alarms are for if you, if you get too close or beyond your no deco time. I wasn't able to activate because we didn't hit proper depth or you know, I didn't stay at 60 feet for quite long enough. All of the alarms that I set went off beautifully and it is kind of nice that it both uh, vibrates and gives you a flashing screen. You know, the depth limitations are definitely there. You can't go deeper than 130 feet. So you shouldn't be using this watch if you're trying to do, you know, deco dives. You shouldn't be using this if you're doing much more technical dives. I can definitely see how this would appeal to somebody who just wants one device. You don't have to have multiple computers. The size is nice. A lot of basic dive computers are quite big, like twice the size of this. It's definitely for recreational divers. All of us agree that the Apple Watch Ultra is a great smartwatch. It has good battery life, a large, bright screen, precise GPS, unique features such as the Oceanic Plus app that can turn it into a recreational dive computer, and a rugged build that in our three months with it has stood up to rock climbing, diving, hiking, running, and everyday use. But while the Apple Watch Ultra sells a grand idea of being the perfect companion to folks who live adventurous lives, often it falls just short of other extreme watches from brands like Garmin, Koros, and Polar. Those watches have longer battery life and provide more in-depth metrics for athletes. Not to mention, some of the safety features on the Apple Watch Ultra are not as reliable, or in the case of the Siren, as loud as we'd hoped. And without Apple Care Plus, repairing the Ultra is very hard to do on your own and will end up costing a lot of money. Instead, the Apple Watch Ultra is for folks who want a device that can be an everyday smartwatch, as well as an outdoor companion when needed. It's for the aspiring marathoner, it's for the weekend warrior, and it's especially for the tech lover that just wants the biggest, baddest Apple Watch money you can buy. And well, for that person and for $800, it's gonna feel really badass. Holy shnikes. <laughs> I'm looking at the complete timeline for this video and um, what a beast. Anyways, view I thought I'd never see. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what you thought of this format. We took our time with this review and did some crazy stuff. Um, anyway, I hope that you're well. I appreciate you very much. Happy New Year and uh, yeah, be well.